Jody Arias is on trial for the murder of Travis Alexander, and we know things about her and her life. But to understand this young man and what was lost here gives you a better understanding of the tragedy and the loss in, in this killing. Travis Alexander uh, grew up in Riverside, California. Now, Jody Arias grew up in Northern California in Wairica, but down here in Riverside is where Travis grew up. And much different life than Jody Arias. Jody Arias said she had the ideal life with her parents. Well, Travis's parents, both of them, were drug addicts. They weren't necessarily there for him. And the fact that he grew up in this household for some time really shaped who he was and what he wanted to make himself into. He blogged about uh, his childhood and specifically his parents. I want to read some of that for you. And this is from May 5th of 2008. You see, when you are high or on meth for a week, when you eventually come down, there's a lot of sleep to catch up on. When you sleep for four days with a house full of kids, there isn't any food cooked. We would eat what was there, but before long, what was edible would be eaten or rot. And then what was rotten would be eaten too. I don't remember much of this. I can only think of one instance where I found a piece of moldy bread on the side of the fridge, which represented the last thing we could eat. I remember being teased by canned food, knowing full well what was in the can, but not knowing how to use a can opener. So how was he saved from this life? He was saved from this life by his grandma. He and his siblings rescued by her. And grandma was a practicing Mormon and introduced Travis to Mormonism, which became a big part of his life. Now, his siblings also a big part of his life. A family of eight he came from. So it wasn't just Travis alone. He had others uh, there with him. Let's take a look at uh, Travis Alexander as a youngster. Uh, growing up. You take a look at this picture. And remember, at this time, he's being raised by two parents who are on drugs, yet you still see the optimism, the smile, the life in the eyes of, of Travis Alexander. That's something that he carried with him throughout his 30 years. Here you see a picture of him in Colorado, and uh, we talked about his Mormonism. That's where he spent his mission years, in Colorado. And again, he liked to travel, liked to be adventurous, liked to see the world. And every day he wanted to be better than the day before. This picture is Travis with his sister. And this picture almost wasn't taken. And it was taken very shortly uh, before Travis was killed. And his sister actually didn't want to take the picture because she felt like she didn't look good. But Travis convinced her, as he convinced many other people to do things, convinced her uh, to take the photo, and she is so grateful that she has this, uh, and, and it's still posted on MySpace. It's the last photo that, he, that she has uh, with her brother that she misses so much. Now, Travis Alexander, through the Mormonism and inspired by uh, his grandparents, became a motivational figure. And he was working for a prepaid legal, that's one thing that he did, but also motivating others and speaking to others. And here you see him in his glory, I would say. You know, he's dressed to the nines and he's addressing a crowd and he's got them eating out of their hands. Uh, here's another uh, posting we found from MySpace. Again, addressing a crowd. And that seems to be where he was most comfortable. He did it on his blog, but he also did it on person, in person, speaking to people, speaking about his life, what he wanted to do and where he was. And at the time he was murdered, at age 30, he was still single, but he was looking forward to that, that next step in life. When I first started training and things like that, you can imagine uh, the first thing I would hear a lot of is, by the way, he's single. And, uh, and, and I'd be like, that's right, I am. Maybe he's going to get me. And, uh, that's been going on for six years. 